by Hyundai New Zealand. It's one of the great traditions, one that has stood strong when so much else has changed. The clash between the touring British and Irish Lions and the Māori All Blacks. They've come from all parts to a packed Rotorua International Stadium, a spiritual home of Māori rugby for what many have dubbed the fourth test of this 2017 tour. Kia ora tēnā koutou katoa. welcome to Game 5 of the tour. And it's a welcome into match analyst Justin Marshall. Justin, a very special occasion. Yes, welcome in everybody. It certainly is, Tony. Plenty to look forward to. The Māori, no doubt, as we look into their changing room, will look to entertain. Fascination is to the Lions, who are desperate for a win. Shadow test team. Oh, it's mouth-watering prospect in front of us this evening. Well, as expected, the Lions name a near test strength side. Kane Hames on the Māori loose head, takes on the Irish bull, Tyke Furlong. Ash Dixon captains the Māori at hooker and faces England's Jamie George. And two very big men complete the front row, Marco Vunipola and Ben May. The impressive Maro Itoji locks horns with the wily Joe Wheeler in the second row, with Highlander Tom Franklin lining up against another Englishman, George Cruz. Peter O'Mahony captains the side from number six up against the powerful Akira Ioane. What a battle in the Lucys it'll be. The Tullow Tank, Sean O'Brien up against Elliot Dixon in jersey seven. And at number eight in front of his home crowd, Liam Messam against a key Lions man, Talupe Falitao. Tawira Kerbalo will relish the opportunity to front up against the classy Connor Murray at nine. Damien McKenzie gets to showcase his skills in the 10 jersey. Test spot to play for tonight for Johnny Sexton. Charlie Natai and Ben Teo's confrontation in the centres will certainly be physical. Jonathan Davis returns to centre after his injury in Christchurch. Matt Proctor opposite him. Rico Iwani gets his second crack at the Lions. Anthony Watson has looked dangerous on the right wing. Nehe Milner Scudder lines up on the right wing and block-busting wing George North is on the left. Lee Halfpenny has plenty to play for tonight and James Lowe starts this huge occasion at fullback. But the Lions bench features tour captain Sam Warburton who seems to be in a real battle for a test jersey. Hicker Elliott, a veteran presence for the Māori who can bring some real talent off the bench. Well, the weather conditions have certainly been threatening to affect the going tonight. Let's get a word on conditions and the atmosphere that's building here from Ian Smith. Well, Tony, as we speak, uh, the light drizzle has gone away and let's hope it stays away. Uh, there's no wind at all to speak of. Playing surface will be exceptionally greasy on top. But uh, other than that, no problem at all. Atmosphere, well, this is New Zealand, Maori and Rotorua. Need I say any more? Well, there's certainly more red in the stadium than we've seen so far on the tour. Famous matches have played here before. The Lions started their tour here in 2005 against Bay of Plenty. It's the sixth time they've played at this stadium, but the first official game against the Māori All Blacks. And all along, this game has been seen as a huge pointer to their chances in the Test Series. A win against a talented, passionate Māori team would give them a huge boost. Defeat would raise some fairly serious doubts about their abilities against the All Blacks. A great honour for a warrior from Ireland's southernmost province of Munster as Peter O'Mahony becomes the fourth captain on this tour for the British and Irish Lions. Lions fans certainly here in greater numbers for this one. A week out from the first test. Marco Vunipola will look out for him. There's uh, a man there whose father, Fial, Captain Tonga against the Māori All Blacks in 1998. Tonight he anchors a Lions scrum out to gain a vital edge to curb the attacking game of the home team. They'll see the set piece as well as, of course, their rush defence. 
as central to their game. Well, a proud moment now for Ash Dixon of Hawke's Bay, the Highlanders, and Nati Tahina Iwi leads the Māori All Blacks into what, for many of these young men, will be the biggest game of their life. they come many of them with just a hint of a smile on their face it certainly is a wonderful occasion fascinating selection perhaps the biggest selection call for Colin Cooper the Maori coach was to hand the number 10 jersey to Damian McKenzie whose explosive running game might be a key to unlocking the Lions rush defense well, before we start our thoughts have once again been drawn to London a moment of silence now for the victims of the Grenfell Tower fire in North Kensington and London. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, New Zealand Rugby asks you to join with us the teams and communities right across New Zealand in standing together to acknowledge those affected by the recent London fire. Please stand with us and unite in a brief moment of silence as we pay our respects for those precious lives lost. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing for the New Zealand National Anthem. Signing the National Anthem on the big screen is Tanisha Sleeman, and to sing your New Zealand National Anthem tonight, Lizzie Marbley. such a range of emotions on the faces of the Māori All Black players and now the challenge under these misty skies the haka of the Māori All Blacks Timatanga
12 years ago, they performed it in Hamilton and it inspired them to a famous victory. Timatanga providing a passionate, powerful prequel to this much-awaited game. If you aim for the skies, you will reach the mountain peaks. A challenge to themselves as much as it is to their opposition. Referee for tonight's match from South Africa, Yako Paper. Much interest in his performance as he will control the first test. Jerome Garces and Romain Poit, the other referees for the test series with the flags tonight. Ian Smith has the TMO duties. As captain. And it'll be Johnny Sexton to kick off the ninth match between the British and Irish Lions and the Māori All Blacks. And straight away, it's in the hands of Tawara Kerbalo who kicks deep, but not into touch, Lee Halfpenny. Here's Johnny Sexton for the first of many high kicks for the night. James Lowe tonight wearing number 15 in that raking left foot punt of his, but he's overcooked this one. And it's going to give the Lions a good chance early on in the game. Great field position, just 30 metres from the line. Taken down by Cruz in the middle of the line out. They give it to Anthony Watson. One of the danger men in this Lions back line. Well, what are the tactics going to be? They go to their forward pack at first. Maro Itoji. Now George the hooker. Connor Murray. What a key role he will play tonight. Half penny up in the line early on. And now the first sign of the threat of Ben Teal at inside centre. Half penny close to the touchline. So... Early attacking chance here for the Lions. Itoji again. They'll want to make a good start. They'll want to take early control. And here's their opportunity now. North Davis now. Inside the 22 they go. Nehi Milner Scudder involved in the tackle. Now Cruz. They try and hold him up, but he's strong. Takes it to ground. Sixth into the line. And they feed it off to big tight furlong, the Irishman. Out in front of the post now. This is a terrific opening stanza from the Lions. 11 phases they have gone. Now it's Todji. Picked up by O'Brien. Away it goes to Vunipola. 
Murray looking to get it wide now. Davis through the hands, rolled it along the ground though. And half penny is claimed by James Lowe. Back to the 22 they go, but they've still got the ball. Cruz now. Release. Prolonged period on attack. Maori holding their line, holding their discipline. Can they hold out? Sexton with the run and a nice ball back on the inside. Murray off the pass from no, Furlong. No. Itoji charging at Liam Messon, who tries to hold no. him up. But they're getting the ball to ground. Too late. And now the referee plays advantage to the Lions. Furlong waiting for it, but now they go out towards the wing. Half penny was out there, though they'll come back for the penalty. Well, in the end, a blast of the referee's whistle brings it to an end. But Justin, what a very good start. Excellent discipline from the Lions. Liam Messon was involved in that tackle, eventually penalised as he couldn't roll out of the ruck. And a couple of really key tackles that the Māori needed to make. One in particular by James Lowe off the sixth and break. This is it. In fact, he goes through the line, turns it back on the inside there to Furlong. And that's the tackle that needed to be made. Connor Murray on the support line. James Lowe drops him. And this is the penalty. Mess him unable to get out of there. Excellent start, though, for the Lions, Smithy. Well, really uh, solid work around the fringes for me. Everyone getting their hands on the ball. Similar to the start they had against the Crusaders. Everyone wanting to get involved with confidence as well. And uh, no surprise at all that they will take the three points here. One of the best in the business. Lee Halfpenny has got the duties initially tonight anyway. And uh, he'll make uh, this one without any trouble at all. Kicking conditions, not a breath of wind. That smoke, the, the, the fog you thought uh, you saw was actually the, the residue from the fireworks just slowly drifting away. And that is, uh, accentuates no breeze. And Lee Halfpenny hasn't missed a kick on the tour so far. And he kicked a record 49 points in the series against Australia in 2013. First shot at goal of the night. Guides it inside the right hand upright. And the Lions have the early lead. And a deserved early lead by 3-0. What was very noticeable in their attack was how flat Johnny Sexton was. He was taking the ball right on the advantage line and challenging the defence. And secondly, how slow the line speed from the Māori was. They're going to have to increase that. They were very standoffish. Oh, Damien McKenzie with the restart. Remember, it went back to a clearing kick from James Lowe that went into touch on the full. Now here's a good run from Faletau. Murray will kick. And oh, this one got plenty of distance on it. No real opportunity to chase. So here's the first opportunity, ball in hand. Well, no, McKenzie decides to kick. Sits up nicely for Lee Halfpenny. And the Welshman puts it high, having to race forward McKenzie. Had to bail out of it. In fact, Franklin called for it. Didn't take it cleanly. And Release it falls for the Lions, who are just getting all the ball at the moment. Māori coming through, but they'll come back for the knock-on by Tom Franklin. That's a well, can't forward. underestimate the importance of this game for the Lions. I think always flagged as a real test rehearsal. I mean, an important game to win in its own right. But with the test a week away, I mean, this is where they really do show their hand. Absolutely. They need to, once they get their syner synergy and their togetherness with their combinations, they do need to start working at that tactic. That they're going to take game plan orientated into the first test next weekend and we've already seen gl glimpses of that interesting setup here for the Cross. lions george north directly in behind the scrum just to the left which is keeping neha milner scudder defensively aware on this side nearest to us and outside sexton of course has been key and he's been the best ball carrying back on this tour so far for the lions well, scrum solid and ball lost and here's an opportunity off turnover possession for the Māori All Blacks. Ioane in the tackle of half penny. Counter ruck coming in from Sexton of all people. And he's done pretty well now. Mess him. They'll try and get him out over the touchline. And eventually they do put him out. Well, good response to that spill by the, the Lions. 
And they'll big, get a line out on halfway. Big hit, Curvalo. They worked it well, though. North, North needs to receive this. He just takes his eye off it. There's the hole. It was perfectly worked. And the ball's there for him right on the chest. And he's through the hole. Tio attracted the defenders. Curbalo took out Murray. What was George North doing? He was in a massive hole. He's playing Furlong. The Irishman who's made such a rapid rise. And George finds the captain for the night, O'Mahony. Trying to drive it away. They haven't been able to. The referee says that's once. Now they start to move forward. And gaining a bit of momentum now too. Now the Māori hold them up. And they'll have to go. This time a more contestable kick goes up from Murray. Watson giving chase and Ioani reaching out for it. Knocks it forward and offside. Well, good early pressure coming from the Lions. And another opportunity here for Halfpenny to kick for goal. And just an indication of the skill set of Connor Murray. In that position there to put up a box kick, risking a good line-out drive to turn the ball back over. He had to time it perfectly. Getting it inside the 22 means it's a markable kick. Instead, look where it lands. It's right on the barrier of the 22. It's perfectly executed. His kicking game is a real threat and a weapon for the Lions. Moana was al always struggling to get to a two. It certainly was. He just never felt confident that he was going to get there. So Halfpenny has been playing for too long. Here's Maro Itoje. He's a real firecracker in that second row. And he likes to show his emotions on the field. Watched on by Neil Jenkins, one of the best goal kickers the game has known. Lee Halfpenny to double the score. Two out of two for Halfpenny. Still hasn't missed on two up. And the Lions lead by six to nil. Well, Colin Cooper, the Murray coach, was fully aware of the kicking game of the Lions. He knew exactly what they were going to do, and they've done it. The problem is that the Maori have not been able to cope with it at all thus far. Got to sort that, the back three. So McKenzie again restarts. Faletau. He is an outstanding carrier of the rugby ball. Talupe Faletau. Vunipola sets it nicely for Connor Murray, who really has looked like the key man for the Lions on this tour. Uh, that's the other thing that the Lions do well, and I'm sure uh, everyone's noticed as, as well, is the fact that they don't allow a restart, although laziness here has done that. And McKenzie, first opportunity to have a run. They're awake to him though. Till made the tackle. Kerb Barlow away to low. Jabs a little king out towards the wing. Proctor was out there. And eventually it's going to go into touch. Knocked forward by George North. Again taken quickly. The Māori want to play it at speed. Partially charged there by George Cruz. And now it falls for Dixon. And Ash Dixon takes it up to halfway. Might have been ripped away here by the Lions. Itoji. Ball's loose on the ground though. And now, oh, the Māori have got it back. Wheeler clears it away. Elliot Dixon moves it on first. Touch near him. Milner scutter again. The kick is the tactic. Awkward for North going back. They got into a tangle. Toe to head by Messam. Liam Messam scores. In front of his home fans, Liam Messam gets the first try of the night. Completely against the run of the play. What they did, the Māori, is unsettle the Lions, who have started perfect in this game already. They just decided to take some quick throw-ins and just break the game up a little bit, take it away from its structure. The kick from Milner Scudder that North can't handle. Liam Messam following it up, gets the first kick on it perfect. Great timing. 
What a strike, but against the run of play, you'd have to say. Isn't it great to see this guy with silky touches back playing regular rugby? Jonathan Davis did the right thing. He ran the line that took Milner Scudder out, but the rest was done very poorly. George North and Lee Halfpenny, they'll have to look at that again. That was awful defence. Slippery ball, mess him far too quick. You're right, Justin. They let the Maori up the ante in terms of the pace, and they paid. It was going from structure to structure, wasn't it, for, for the Lions? Kick-off, box kick, line-outs, everything was just going the way that they wanted it to, formulating in the way that they wanted their game plan. Now, Damien McKenzie, who's been kicking just under 80% in Super Rugby. 15 in from touch, this to put the Māori All Blacks in front. And he's done it! So after a rocky start, the Māori All Blacks take the lead over the Lions, 7-6. to six. 13 minutes gone in Rotorua. I think they've been expecting the Māori to run everything. They've altered their tactics in this weather. And it's come up trumps. Akira Ioane brushes off Watson. Tries to brush off Itoji. That's a little tougher, but he still goes. Stays strong in the tackle. Well, a little injection of confidence that try has given the Māori All Blacks. And now Tom Franklin carries it forward. Awkward for Lowe. McKenzie. Kicks deep. I thought he was playing advantage. Yeah, he was. Yako Paper. Well, Lions had got up offside. You love that, Justin Marshall. He milked that beautifully, didn't he? He did, but he interfered enough that Kubalo couldn't get into his two Nine. position correctly, either to pass Nine. or possibly to box kick. Just don't aim for him. Like, you, like, go straight for him. Yeah. I'll give you the benefit this time. Just look at the way he stays strong. Well, Māori All Blacks come into this game having won 20 internationals in succession. They've lost a couple of games since their last defeat against a test side against England in 2003. Lost to Munster last year, lost to the New Zealand Barbarians, but they've beaten a lot of test teams in that time, including Ireland, on this ground back in 2010. Nine. Over, please. And they look to have settled down after a rough start, Justin. Yes, yeah, certainly. Statistically, which backs up the start from the Lions, was the fact that they'd made 26 tackles the Māori to just four from the Lions in the first 10 minutes. So all the flow was going with the Lions. They have fought back into the game nicely, the Māori. Franklin claims it. Itoji trying to get in and disrupt. And it's something the Lions do very well. And they've managed to get the ball off them too. Not necessarily going up, trying to take clean ball off the opposition throw, but they do get in, they close the gap, and they put great pressure on. Now the high kick, that's better from Rico Ioane. Faletau and Watson up to make the tackle. Here's the rush defence. What are they going to try and do to beat it? We've seen the little kicks. This time they go deeper. And McKenzie finding an angle too. North back inside the 22. That's not going to go out. Nehing Milner scutter waits. McKenzie low. And he'll look for the left foot kick. See if he can get this one right. And uh, not bad. Oh, yeah, very good. Watson eventually brings it under control. That hasn't gone out either. I don't think Messam will kick. Here's low. This time, Sean's always been clobbered. Absolutely clobbered. I think the refs will have a look at that. But play carries on. Player did look to be committed. And I think as we speak, TMO might be having a check on that. Now O'Brien talking of powerful men. Sexton now he is taking the ball up to the line, isn't he? Hands it off to Furlong. Murray. Now Cruz, two English locks in this game, Cruz and Itoji. Sexton, now Davis straightening, breaks the first tackle, Davis!
Lewis. Step in. Oh, just cut down by Kerr Barlow. Only a metre from the line. Murray fires it wide. O'Brien, they come quickly out on him. Great chance here for the Lions. Sexton wants it on the short side. Now he goes open. Cruz is there. Wheeler and May get out to tackle him. Still there for the Lions. Referee playing advantage. Murray tries to go around the fringe. Can't get past Ioane. Marty have at least managed to slow this down. Wheeler has to make another tackle. Furlong has it. Fatal waiting for it. Cruz away to the right. And they'll come back for the penalty. And an opportunity here. Offside number seven. For them to go back in front of the lines. All clear on that. All clear, mate. Thank you. And you can hear it. It just got the all clear. They checked it. And we'll Lowe wasn't the taken late. System, it. Yeah. I agree with what you called it at the time, Tony, was the fact that the player was committed, George Cruz, it was. Offside penalty. Yeah, just way off somewhere. No. Underway. Just, just on there. Oh, Mahoney just shot. making sure that it wasn't uh, a little bit more, more cynical than just a, a penalty. But yeah. great break from Jonathan Davis. Here's the charge down on James Lowe. You can see he goes up and just protects himself, had no problem with that whatsoever. He's put his arms out, but that's only to protect himself as well on the way down, or you'll get one in the ribs. But the break from Jonathan Davis, Sexton started this game sensationally, taking the line on, creating space. They had three or four players out this side, breaks the tackle of Proctor, just can't find George North, who is in the free. If, if he had managed to get the ball to North, they probably would have gone in. Oh, she so looks good, doesn't he? Sexton running at the line. Just well, seizing the moment, of course. No. Everyone before the tour felt that Farrell would be an open and shut case for the number 10 jersey. He's had to pull out of this match. He was going to be on the subs bench. Johnny Sexton taking his opportunity. And so far, so too has Lee Halfpenny. Third shot of the night for him. And nails another one. And the British and Irish Lions are back in front, 9-7 to seven in Rotorua. What a great man to have at your disposal. Two very good goal kickers in this Lions team tonight, Sexton and Halfpenny. My first 20 flown by here Jonathan Davis quality player the Welsh outside centre Itoji well they seize the opportunity to hold him up they'll drag him to ground now as soon as they hear the word ball and that's good defence but not great ball carrying from Itoji yeah Ioane Akira Ioane not for the first time the first man there and the strength is shown by him and then Ben May getting underneath as well and now an infringement by Itoji not releasing the ball. Murray's wanted a quick start. Now a, can't, a kick at goal chance. And, and there is perhaps just a little problem that Itoji will have to deal with if he's to realise his potential. He is an emotional player, but sometimes it does get the better of him. And he's given away, really, a needless penalty here. Okay, well, that's the one I saw. So, McKenzie. Ball and close to 40, but well within his range. Struck the first one nicely. Yeah, it's just too yeah. Chance to put the Māori All Blacks back in front. And familiar routine. The grin, the response from the crowd, the kick, it's high and it's over. Struck it confidently. And the Māori All Blacks lead again by 10-9. to 9.
Sexton, high restart down towards the 22. Ioane calls for it. Etodjik, well, makes amends to a degree for his indiscretion by getting up to put him on ground. Dixon, taken inside the 22. Kerbalo looks like he's going to kick. And a charge by Cruz falls. Ben May, fortunately for the Māori All Blacks, was in the right place at the right time. Now they go back to low, and that is a better clearing kick. Not going out. Sexton, who has made a very good start, puts up a high kick, a towering kick for half penny to get after, but McKenzie had the time to get up and take it. And May is there to help out his fullback. Milner Scudder rather hurried into that kick. Now North, maybe a chance here for Big George North to wind up. Can't get past Dixon though. Charlie Natai is there as well. But the Lions have it on the 10. Cruz now, Sexton, flat ball at Todgy, almost through the gap. Put on the ground by Messam, but good momentum. Sexton again, Vuli Pola. They swarm in on him. Again, they're trying to hold him up off the deck. This time they can't do so. Cruz, Sexton, and a little show of the ball, and a lovely offload to Davis. How well is that combination working? Although Davis may have lost this, he has. Well, they've got Teal between them, but that Sexton-Davis combo working well, Justin. It's stressing the Māori defensive line, no doubt about it, and the transition runners also out wide are causing overlap issues so it's forcing players like proctor and natai to turn in and try and cut it off at source which sexton is recognizing and he's dictating play really well when he can see them coming up and trying to cut that outside off it does expose the little short passes which he's finding players and finding space for himself otherwise when there's that bow and that disjoint in the line they're finding some change in the outside channels great great attack and they are really stressing the defensive line They've already let me know. They've seen it. They've seen it. Yeah. And they're happy so with the ball. Here for Lucy Head Prop, Kane Hames for the Murray All Blacks. A good chance for both teams just to regroup. 24 minutes gone. There's some nice work at that last breakdown by Matt Proctor, like Charlie Natai, coming back from problems with concussion. There he is there. Made a good tackle and got up and contested the ball quickly. And he's responsible. So I'm getting the scrum feet. Let's take another look at the try here, Justin. And uh, Milner Scudder, what great bag of tricks he's got. When you look at the, the attack and the ability for Milner Scudder to recognise a possible opportunity and then mess him to follow up, you have to compliment the Māori for striking in that quick instance, but you also have to wonder from a Lions perspective how they could make a mistake like that, a costly one from George North. They had plenty of players and they have it, had it covered and that error cost them dearly. Well, here's an interesting situation. I've got McKenzie right and uh, James Lowe left, so they've got both kicking options, right left foot kicking options if they choose that, but they might want to just have a crack. There's an acres of space behind Watson on the right wing for Lowe to aim at with his left boot. Oh, okay. Mahani gesticulating towards the touchline. What do you want me to say? Super Okay. So there's the split. Yeah, what's interesting, sorry, TJ, is they are set defensively, the Lions, waiting for the kick. All in, let's go. They've got Watson sitting back and North sitting back. So as we pan out nicely here, you'll get a look. The, the, they're not expecting the Māori to run, so they're expecting right, to kick, so they've got these. players out of the pitch are sitting quite deep, and the Māori have kicked a lot so far in this game, but certainly on for them to run, particularly to the left. Puts a lot of pressure on Connor Murray defensively. James Lowe can get it nice and flat off Kerbalo. Well, as we know, there's always a lot of steam around Rotorua. Well, the Māori scrum has started well, that's two solid scrums they've packed down low, gets such tremendous distance off that left foot. Halfpenny scampering up towards the 10, putting it high to get after it. 
Kerr Barlow going up, but missed it completely. Brilliantly taken by Halfpenny. Murray now swings it away at Todgy. They got on him a little quickly for his liking. Sexton, no plenty of room. And he puts the ball down towards the corner. And, oh, tantalisingly close. And then into touch. That's a great kick from Johnny Sexton. Great kick from Sexton. But again, from the New Zealand Māori, this is half penny off the James Lowe kick. They were set and waiting for the kick with the Lions. And they just didn't use any common sense or game plan intuition to do anything different the Māori. Well, they go long. And always a risk. But Liam Messon takes it up, coming out untidily. And low, well, he's got nowhere to go, no referee. Five, no numbers. Said they, the Lions didn't number up, so... Well, the All Blacks... Yeah. Just a little lucky there. at least there. five against three. Because they were getting themselves into a yeah, world of trouble. Yeah, my point is, the decision makers, the man with the ball now, Damien McKenzie, and also James Lowe, who was on the other side for that scrum before, they need to make better decisions. Clear and kick again hasn't gone out and half penny this time opts to pass passes to his fellow Welshman George North but the Māori All Blacks well aware of the threat he poses Sexton now wrapping around with Furlong quickly through the hands Watson back hit by half penny or on half penny by Liam Messam no Kerr Barlow thought the ball was out had to leave it away Sexton, nice ball into space too for Faletau. He tried to offload it, but he's given it to Charlie Ngatai, and he kicks deep, and McKenzie is tearing after it. Labouring back is George North. Oh, he's got away, though. Ngatai gets him oh at the God. second go, but he's bought his team what? valuable metres and some time. He was struggling back, though, George North. And in the Not end... Me. He's done really well. And Connor Murray just waits for the right moment. Oh, Milner Scudder waiting for it and couldn't take it cleanly. It, it was on for the quick throw. Such a good kick from there from Connor Murray. He's got his back to the line that he's kicking to, so he has to sort of hook his leg around to get it into touch and he did it magnificently this is the breakout Nato spotted the space and then he led the chase the work of north like you said to buy himself some time but the new zealand multi players needed to back off here wait for him to stand instead they tried to get him before he's got back to his feet where he's got better body position and can drive through no, the tackle he's a big man Are you in? Now set piece so far it's gone okay for this Māori team that have only had a week really to prepare for this game. Dixon tapping it down. Kerbalo to McKenzie and this time he does take the defence on. Only Pollock tried to take his legs out from underneath him. Ioane. Tio trying to rip the ball away. Propped up. Again sees them coming up quickly. Itoji makes the tackle. That really is questionable whether Vaughn Pola released, but the referee... Number one, says the driver. ...rules that he did arrive, wasn't part of the tackle, and therefore was entitled to play at the ball, and he wins the penalty. And again, it's just a snap-on effect for the Māori of defence from the British and Irish Lions. Their line speed forced McKenzie in in the first instance. He had to take contact, and then also Proctor because he had no other option, perceivable option on his outside. He again just went individually to the line and he ended up getting turned over. And that's just defensive pressure that's making those players make difficult decisions and not good ones. Lee Halfpenny very, very interested in uh, coming forward and having a look at the post. But Peter Omani, the skipper, gave it straight to Johnny Sexton and said, let's get an attacking line-out drive Go. going. When he polar over the ball, he was a judge to have all the rights yep. by the referee. And I, when you look at it a second time, he was bang on. He was absolutely right. Great work from Vuni Polar, who goes and now takes the ball down from George Cruz. Going across field first. And the referee tells him, they've got to get things moving here. Right. Edging ever so slightly ahead. Murray wanted 
a runner. Tio just didn't quite arrive at the right time. Cruz goes in with a big clean out, gets rid of Messam. Palatel now. Sexton complaining, he was trying to get out of there, Messam wouldn't let him go. Now Ioane goes in. Well, this time advantage going to the Lions. So they can have a go at it. George put on the ground by McKenzie. The pick and go from Itoje. Kane Hames looking for the turnover. Now Sexton thinks a little kick out towards the wing. Oh, Kerr Barlow was back, but they'll come back for the penalty at the breakdown. There's two important breakdown penalties the Lions have won in quick succession. Well, this, uh, will obviously be another kick at goal. Get three points to get the Lions the lead back. A lot of interest tonight, uh, Justin, in the performance so of the Lions uh, open side number seven, Sean O'Brien, because they're formulating that loose forward trio. Is it this trio? And if it is, that means the tour captain, Sam Warburton, who's on the bench tonight, will not be starting. Big call. Well, they're very good against the Crusaders, the back row. We know O'Brien is a very strong carrier of the ball. The only debatable part of his game was whether or not he's going to do enough at the breakdown defensively. But he is big and strong over the ball. He works well with Mahani and also Falatau. And you'd have to say that, yes, they look very good as a combo and will most likely start the test next weekend. Well, a gift three points here for Lee Halfpenny. And they're doing it in multiples of three. Lions back in front, 12 to 10. It's a shared responsibility, isn't it, the breakdown these days anyway. His teammates have won breakdown penalties. It's a very good looking loose trio. And McKenzie restarting again. He changes hands once more. Falital. Eventually put on the ground just inside the 22. Just look to set up a good position here for a clearing kick. Murray. And onto the boot it goes again for Connor Murray. Drifting out into touch. Low is there. And a good chase. Diligent chase on the far side from Anthony Watson. Although the line out. Well, again, they took their eyes off the ball. The Lions. And here's McKenzie in broken play. Pops it back and field to miss him. Leave it seven. Well, I think they really did fall for a bit of a sucker punch there. Let's see if they're going to pay for it low. Sexton trying to hold him up. Look for all the world like they'd settled for the regulation line out. Ioane. Tony Paula making another tackle. Now the captain, Dixon. Is the first man in. Seven's the first man in. Well, O'Brien had it, but Kerbalo's taking it off him. May now. Well, complaints here, yeah, and answered. The Lions just not rolling away, trying to slow the ball down. And Yako Paper awards a penalty. Oh, 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 oh. Get away. Yeah, it's the same penalty as you can see that. One roll and four in his Well, seat. it's gone against Marco Vunipola, but Justin, he has been very impressive in the opening 20 30 minutes of this game the lions have been impressive that they've completely shut the moldy out of this game in the opening 35 minutes they've had 73 percent position they've had 77 percent of the territory they've had three minutes or nearly four minutes inside the opposition 22 they have completely dominated the game they've shut the moldy out they got a fortuitous try and they got a penalty off a bit of ill-discipline from Itoji. Apart from that, they have not been in the game. That's how good and how disciplined the Lions have been. Been strong, Curvalo, tonight. One or two very big tackles. He ripped the ball clean out of O'Brien's hands there. This is a kick of around 56 metres on the angle for McKenzie. Well, that drizzle just starting to fall, but this is a monster. Well, it's within his range. Even in these conditions, the heavy air here. 
He's a long way out. 56 metres. Not bad. Not bad. Just away to the left. Well, it looked like it just had the length, not quite the direction. Mine was honestly playing with you. And just a sign there. They're not here to run everything. They want to win the game. So just three and a half minutes to play. First half of what four lead changes. Again, not too good under the high ball. And that's something they will have to tidy up. Be it from the set piece or from general play. They are not fielding those kicks with any authority. Well, look, I just can't emphasize enough how they've been shut out of the game. The Maori. They're not dealing with any of the high kicks. They're not winning the breakdowns. They certainly, as I reeled off the stats before, winning any of the majority of the usual statistics either and uh, you know they're well out of this game they're lucky to be where they are scoreboard wise it's been clinical from the Lions that was a really good chase and that's something they have done pretty well the Lions so far tonight on, uh, Watson was just fantastic here all over the top of Franklin and that was where the pressure came from and here's uh, an opportunity for the Lions fairly orthodox set up here across the park but, flat, but six and nice and flat and quite wide as well oh, Murray juggled the ball got it in and now waits on the short side this time stabbing the little kick through but here's Rico Ioani oh, Todgy up to bring him to ground clean out is there though Wheeler fires it away McKenzie big pass away to low now a bit of space here for Nehi Milner Scudder Opted to hang on to it, and uh, oh, some really good work there from Proctor to make sure the ball stayed available. Elliot Dixon drags it to ground. Again, Lions are going to get penalised here. It's Furlong. This barrel of a man from Leinster, Ty Furlong, former Gaelic footballer in there scrapping for it i'll tell you who wasn't happy and that was his fellow front rower marco vunipola he could hear the referee saying release release get your hands off it and he didn't and vunipola let furlong know well and truly came from a poor kick from connor murray and he hasn't had many but what a great chase from jonathan davis there to get milner scudder in the end and almost get up and win the ball there's Vinny Polo saying, leave it, leave it, get off it. Probably thought he was encouraging him. <laughs> he wasn't. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Line out, look like a piano accordion, squeezing up and then stretching out again. And well, disrupted, but it's been knocked forward by the Lions, so the Māori All Blacks have it. Nowhere really for Kerbalo to go. Vinny Polo makes yet another tackle. Mess him. They're going to try and make a few hard meters here inside the 22. Looking to set themselves up maybe for a half time lead. Joe Release Wheeler. Out. The two Highlanders locks who missed their the team's win out. early in the week. Just, again, working it away. Here's the siren. Ioane. Lions defense is very good. Again, Messam trying to see off the tackle of Till. Haynes, a swarming defence. Talk so much about the rush, but they're pretty good and tight as well. Messam gets a nice ball away to Dixon. This time, just a semblance of momentum coming into it. Now they go wide, flat pass to Natai. It Todgy and wins a penalty. Well, he got it right that time. And Maro Itoji, who's usually the first one to come in and pat his teammates on the back, this time he's the man getting the congratulations. Over here. Yeah. Look, you get a kick a dead. You got to kick a dead. New laws. 
So Connor Murray puts it into touch, and they've got to have a line out. It's the new law. They are playing under the new law on this tour. I said you have to tap. He it. had to tap it. Yep. And he did tell him to be fair. Yeah. You have to make it there. Well, tap it. If he didn't know that, then that's a fault. Maybe further up the food chain Let's in the go. Lions. Let's go. They've got to throw to the line out. Yeah, they don't need to panic. Look, they just need to get go to their mandatory, which is straight to the front man, pull it down and kick it out. Yeah, that's fine. So I got Black. Well, they take it down to Cruz. And Murray says, is it OK if I put it out this time? And he does. And the first half comes to an end. Four penalties by Lee Halfpenny. Lee Halfpenny. A try by Liam Messam. Conversion and a penalty by Damian McKenzie. And at halftime in Rotorua at the International Stadium, the British and Irish Lions lead the Māori All Blacks by 12 points to 10. Welcome back to the Rotorua International Stadium. We are the Māori All Blacks. They trail the Lions 12 points to 10. With me, Sir John Kewen, Kevin Milamu, Puri Wepu. JK, your first impression, the critical thing from you out of that first <coughs> half. Me. Yeah, I think Connor Murray playing outstanding, which is freeing up Sexton, and he's attacking the line and really dominating, showing some of his form from, you know, last year with Ireland. Yep. Kevin, for you? Um, you know, I'm liking the tempo that I'm seeing from the uh, Māori All Blacks. Uh, it Getting that, those quick lineouts, uh, keeping the ball alive. I think if there's one thing, they just need to be a bit more accurate um, at high ball, uh, just around the uh, around the breakdown. If they can look after that ball, they just they'll get the, get a few more opportunities. And for you, <coughs> I guess the persistence of uh, the box or the bomb uh, from the Lions, and uh, with good chase and on a lot of occasions they've come up trumps with it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the Lions they haven't scored a try in this first half, but the try JK came from an opportunity for this Māori Lions, uh, Māori, Māori Law Black side, and it was just a mistake really from George yeah. North. Uh, North looked a bit sluggish, and the, and the chase from the Marrow was fantastic. Everyone swarming towards it, little error, and they had not been in the game, so important try there. I mean, it didn't look great at the time, but I think, you know, Nehi's great little chip, and just here, not enough urgency, little fumble. The old fellow was on top. And they kick a penalty, they get themselves in front, but pretty, f f not for the first time. Uh, in this tour, they get themselves in good field position, but they're not finding a way to finish this Lions team. You know, a lot of opportunities they've had where they could possibly uh, put up the old Gary Owen inside the uh, opposition's uh, 22, try something different, no one's going to be expecting it, and they're doing really well in terms of uh, their pressure and the catchability around the high ball. You're talking about pressure, Murray Otoje tonight, they're very impressive, Kevy. He's had a, a great pr presence around, uh, especially around the breakdown. Uh, you can see he's a physical man, the way he plays. Um, but, but I think his presence definitely on defence has, has really been uh, something that's uh, been strong tonight. They're bringing everything we thought they would bring Piri tonight, the Lions team. Yeah, well we, talked, we touched on it earlier about the pressure of, uh, of uh, the defence line, moving forward and trying to limit uh, the opportunities that the, the Maldives have. The only way the Maldives have actually got back in the game is a, through counter-attack and, and limited time with the ball. Well, they've had no ball, they had no territory. Well, what do you think? Well, how do they go into the second half? I guess the tidier, uh, tidy things up uh, in terms of around the attack, uh, find a bit more space, uh, you know, in the kicking opportunities. There's a lot of space up the middle of the field where uh, they can find grass and turn it into a kicking uh, duel. And you imagine it's going to be more of the same uh, from the Lions. Well, that's it. It's half-time here from Rotorua, where the Lions, at the moment, leading the New Zealand Maoris, 12 points to 10. Well, the rain driving down, but it's a great old-fashioned sight, isn't it? The crowd standing on the terraces here in Rotorua. Let's hear from the assistant coach of the Māori All Blacks, Tana Umanga with Smithy. Well, Tana, you're uh, in this up to your eyeballs, of course, but I guess you'd like a bit more possession. 
Yeah, we were in the right parts of the field as well. Obviously, um, you know, we, we talked about not making so many errors and giving them opportunities inside our half. And you know, but we still want to play. You know, that's that's our way, um, and we want to keep that. But we've got to be a bit smarter in how we're doing things. And discipline as well, because they're scoring in threes, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. That's right. But our boys are, are really holding strong, you know. And uh, you know, our D's going not too bad. But you know, like you say, our discipline's got to be better. No worries. Good on. Uh, Ian Smith there with Tana Umanga. Rain falling probably the heaviest it's been all night. It's an intriguing contest. The Lions really have dominated so much of the game. They only lead by 12 to 10. Four penalties. Fifth game of the tour. Looking for a morale-boosting win Captain. ahead of the Test Series. And it'll be Damian McKenzie to start the second half. Whistle blows from referee Yako Paper. And again, the kick down into the 22. Where it's taken by George Cruz. Who's done everything they've asked of him in the first half. And sets up a driving more in the second. And straight away, they're going to get a penalty advantage. Sexton kicking out to the wing. Spot a lot of space in. Uh, well... There he, Milner Scudder, got up to defuse that, but they'll come back for the penalty. Just a little show of strength at the start of the second half. You absolutely have to wonder, though, what the Māori were thinking, because Rico Ioane went in there, did create a maul, and from there on in, no other player went in to help him. They all stood off, and eventually one player who went in was Kane Hames, and he just pulled it down. They had the opportunity to tie Itoji up, and uh, no player reacted. No changes, Ian Smith. Come on, boys, in a moment. And the kick, well, looking Ooh. to re-establish control early in the second half, the Lions. Lions have won crucial penalties both for scoring points and getting themselves out of threatening situations O'Brien comes away with it Faletel they do look very well organised this Lions team O'Brien again around the fringe what they have been able to do is play this game in the right part of the field Kerbalo coming through the middle and that's what they're doing they're just building pressure until someone makes a mistake now low under a high kick takes it well so they'll come back oh, Yako Paper with the double blast of the whistle okay, so here still your fight but the next thing is every time they seem to come down here they've already got 12 points four penalties down here so that's got to be fixed okay I'm leaving I'm leaving the option open that yeah. if there's another negative penalty down here that I can give a yellow card yeah I hear you. okay I completely agree, and, and he's right to give them a warning, Yako Paper. There's no doubt that the Māori discipline in this area of the field, think about all of the half tennis kicks, they've all been in this zone. He's had nothing really outside of 25, 30 metres, yeah, and uh, the Māori keep infringing, so they're under a warning now. We've got to, we've got to look, keep looking at that blocking. As you say, Tony, though, they do look well organised. Their set piece is growing game by game, particularly with the Saturday group, isn't it? They look in complete control and doing exactly what they want to do in these conditions. Yeah, their set piece, I, I think there was a lot of speculation that they would try and dominate. They're not dominating. They're just very efficient. Yeah. So Halfpenny still hasn't missed a kick on tour. This half he's got, well, it looks like he's got the rain at his back. That's a great statistic showing there the green dots, all of successes, but they're not incredibly hard kicks, and that's the discipline issue from the Māori. So Lee Halfpenny to stretch the lead, and does so. It's 15 to 10, first points of the second half go to the British and Irish Lions. Well, he really is striking it beautifully. Oh, 
McKenzie. This time tries something a little different, doesn't go the 10. And these errors are really starting to prove very costly. It's not 10, played by Black. I think the man in that picture, they'll be disappointed. Yeah, they, they look flat in there, but every mistake that the, the Murray make, look at the Boyd, and that feeling is across the pack. Everybody is into this now. They just sense they might have this a long, long way out, but they feel they've got the momentum and the game plan working exactly their way. Good opportunity here, Justin. Great opportunity. Midfield scrum. And the way that Sexton and Connor Murray have been combining, he's just giving in so much time. Connor Murray will certainly look on to the left as we look at it. Sexton's got plenty of options outside him. And Tio, big ball carrier. He'll be a handful. Half penny away to the right. Murray looks ready to go to his left. Untidy. And Ioane onto him quickly, but they've still got it. O'Brien, Ioane, who's tackling in this game and also the Blues game, very effective. Got through the whole Blues game without missing one. Now Sexton puts up another high one. Waiting for it all oh, low. Well, I think he sensed there was space, but he didn't do the first job, which was take the ball. And so another mistake, and once again, the Lions in perfect position. In fact, he was going to call for the mark. It's like a cricketer practicing his defensive well, shot on his way back to the pavilion. <laughs> Expect a response from the Lions scrum. They lost their platform before when they had the midfield opportunity I'm sure they would have just had a brief word within themselves to make sure that this scrum creates a great platform for Sexton and Connor Murray to operate off and also Lee Halfpenny it's exactly the same setup but 40 metres down the park Yeah, fine. interesting at this stage both teams have made five handling errors but who's been burnt by them are they going to get burnt again this time they leave it to Faletau to take it off the back. Murray to half penny into a little gap. And a clash of heads close to the line. I think it was a no-arms tackle from Kerbalo. Yeah, and the referee, I think, is going to have another look at it. Keep watching. Leave it now. Leave it now. Yeah, I can't go any lower than that. Yeah. Well, step back. Oh, shut up. Step back, please. Oh, there he is. Please step back. Please step back. Todgy in the middle of it. Telling Joe Wheeler to shut up. Know what he's up to. Concern also for half penny in the We want to check on Black Nine. Nine's very concerned about their champion goal. Please wrap his arms. He hasn't wrapped his arms. Confirming. There's no way he has. Tackled by a black nine. Kubala, yeah, he's coming like a bullet, and he's not used his arms from what I saw in real time. First angle coming up. Yeah, you can see that. Just drop the shoulder. Arm right in front of the body. To the head region as well. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Well, he's in trouble here. Yeah, he is. He'll get carded for that because it's high as well as reckless yeah okay Yako I'm bringing up after this I'll show you another replay with a freeze on the point of contact by nine black thank you well I, I think it's just a question of what the color is if he's talking about the point of contact I know that he's slipping the best angle. And that oh, might no, be the only thing that saves question, him from a red card. Um, first point of contact, so it's above the shoulders or on the shoulders. First point of contact is the cheek of the red player. Cheek of the red player. Um, there's there's amount of force in there, although the only mitigation I can find is that the player is ducking uh, or, or dipping because of the early tackle on his leg. Correct. The mitigating factor is the red man is falling in the tackle. Okay, so you comfortable if I give a yellow card? Yes. Happy with that? Nine black. All right. You don't wrap your arms. 
and there's eye contact on the cheek, first contact. So listen, listen me out. The only mitigation I can find is the fact that the player is tackled with his legs and he's dropping. So it's a yellow card for not wrapping your arms, it's dangerous. Well, I don't think they've got any arguments there. The the legs. There's no yeah, intent to wrap the legs. arms, and that's what's got him into trouble. And he's, he's just lucky that he was slipping. It's the reckless nature of it. He's gone in there without the intent to use his arms. Uh, the fact that Lee Halfpenny is slipping really shouldn't be relevant. It's the, the nature of not wanting to use your arms to tackle and leading with the shoulder and getting somebody in the head. So completely nothing to argue about. And they've opted not for the three, the Lions. They're going for the jugular here. They smell blood. So this time they go to the line out. Marco Gunipolo in at halfback. This might be a decisive moment in this game. Cruz again takes it down. O'Brien feeds it back. George has got it. Well, they haven't been able to advance it, though. And so they go to Tiel, smashes into McKenzie and takes it to within half a meter of the line now they go for the line what's the decision well he's going to go upstairs and jamie george is the man getting the pats on the back the england hooker okay we're gonna have a he thinks he scored confirming checking try or no try yeah wow that was just direct physical confrontation from the Lions they drove the line out and then bang in came Tio steamrolled over McKenzie and then Jamie George picks it up at the back of a run and uh, the ruck and again just power and strength and you would you would think all those Lions players have seen that ball grounded on the line <laughs> It looks could that be short? Just short of the chalk. Well, hold back. Looks a bit blue. Still checking in the angles, it's dark in there. Yeah. Well, that angle won't. We ne really need to see the ball on the line, so that the previous angle might be our best. And what the other Ian Smith makes of it, the TMO. No. We've got two of them in, in the house tonight, that's, that's at least. Yeah. Well, Yako pa Papers not, not giving him any directive saying that I think a try has been scored. He's saying try, yes or no. So he has to conclusively see that ball over or on the line if he can't he can't award the try yes different protocol to what we've been seeing in yeah. super rugby this year where the referee might say here we go it's a Yucko. decision yes, i have a uh, ball on the ground however it's inconclusive whether the ball has reached the try line okay so so you said five minutes five minutes try. okay well the lions were all ready to receive the kickoff I didn't look at this appointed Warren Gatlin did he I think he saw the same exactly the same evidence we were all looking at and it was inconclusive so again just like with the foul play exactly the right call and the process working well no uh, it's not conclusive where that's grounded so obviously they depowered defensively in the back line uh, the New Zealand Māori and I would expect Damien McKenzie going in and defending at halfback if I was watching that first attack, that assault off the back of the line out, I'd be sending Ben Teo down that channel again. Now, there's a blind to work with, Watson, on the right. But of course, with a num numerical advantage, you could use Teo on the same line, the ball goes behind him, and they should have the numbers on the outside. Are they ambitious enough to try something like that? They can't advance the scrum. They get an advantage here, Murray. Well, they get him and hold him up. Vuni pull up and shows his strength. Release the wide, left the wide. There's the ball, away left, he's got advantage. Another advantage, boy, that's starting to mount up now. You can't do that, he's in front, scrum penalty. Well, he might just... He might think about a card here because he did give them a pretty big warning. He said to Ash Dixon, you sort it. No, it's not a team offence. No, no, he's in front. He picked it up and he's in front. He can't do that. Number one, angle. So the penalty's gone against Kane Hames. What do you want? Okay, look at that That's too many. That's, that's card material. 
that's where the infringement took place. Kane Hames on the loose head side. This is a crucial moment in the game, it really is. You would think that if the Māori can somehow keep away this attack and, and get themselves out of this situation, they, they should grow from it. However, the Lions will go a long way to winning the game if they could score right now, particularly a try rather than just the penalty kick. Well, the Charter Lions went up in Tato Tato from the home crowd. Fans really getting into it now. They realise this is a big, big moment in this game. Again, they try and get the shove going. Again, it screws around. Again, it's an advantage. And it's a penalty try. Well, for the first time on tour, the Lions go to their scrum as a weapon and they come up with a penalty try. Their first try of the game. And it has culminated in a huge moment in this game. I can't argue with the decision yeah, no from Yako Popa. They are under penalty pressure. Yeah. The Māori for giving away too many in this zone. And the scrum here, once they start to get established, they start to march forward. Kane Hames there is beginning to buckle. No doubt if that stays in there. They are going to go all the way for a pushover. Under the new laws of the game, there's no conversion. It's an automatic seven-point reward for the Lions and they are now in a very very commanding position look at the emotion from yeah. furlong well furlong up against Haynes in the last two scrums it's been a one-way battle no doubt about it so they went to their line out they used that as a weapon and almost scored and then they went to the scrum and did score set pieces coming together nicely just at the right time 22 to 10. Well, how can they respond? The Māori, they can't win this game on scraps of possession. And that's all they've been allowed. Charlie Ngātai. Again, we have some aggressive defence. But it's really the ability of the Lions to build pressure, force the errors. Some of the errors haven't been forced either. Look at the enthusiasm to get up on defence. Another mistake. Messam loses the ball. Well, right now, the Lions are all over this. Halfpenny. Davis. He's got North with him. Stabs the kick through. Coming across low. Gets it. North gets him. Manages to slip North, but he can't get away from Connor Murray. But you can just see the confidence surging into this Lions team now. Murray played down on halfway in big trouble. Yeah, it's Proctor. He's in, he is in a lot of trouble. He's the one who hit half penny. Yep. Yeah, well, play will carry on. Right now, effectively, they've only got 13 players. Little kick into space, but it's not a good one from McKenzie. Read like a book by Connor Murray. Now the kick ahead for Watson. Nutai got to it first. Ioane. Well, had a look around. Now he's been smashed and driven back into the end goal. And right now, there is only one team in it. There's only been one team in it the entire game. They've completely dominated. They've cranked it up a level. And if the Māori wanted to be anywhere on the field, it is certainly not here. Five metres out with the scrum pending, and they've just conceded a pushover try. Onimus signs. Real concerns for Proctor. He's had some concussion issues lately. He took a heavy knock with half penny. He's not in a good place. They need to make sure that they look after him first and foremost. I don't know that this is a, a head knock. I think this is a, a shoulder problem, and he's had those before. I'll just go back to where it came from. It was a good kick again for Murray, contestable, loaded pretty well, but when he threw the pass in field, Johnny Sexton, who's read the game beautifully all night, was there to smother Rico Ioani, and that's where the turnover came from. Sexton read it beautifully as they look to go inside. Here's the injury. He's tried to drive in. I'll tell you what. And he has come off second best. And look, there's great sportsmanship there from Halfpenny. He might have had a case for, for Jonathan Davis being taken a bit late too on that replay as he kicked the ball through. Well, there's Halfpenny just gone back again. And I'm afraid that is a that looks like a very badly injured shoulder. Oh, very bad. He, he didn't want to move at all, Proctor, initially. And that 
that is an indication when rugby players don't want to move and they, they, they stay still and it's a very serious injury always Rob Thompson on in 23 we'll see if it necessitates a shuffle at any stage well there's Lee Halfpenny who went not once but twice and I, that has had outstanding sportsmanship from the Welsh fullback he wasn't initially happy was Lee Halfpenny he thought it was possibly slightly late but the the minute that he recognised Proctor was in a lot of pain and in trouble, he showed brilliant sportsmanship, which is great to see. But this is the exact same position that they just conceded a pushover try not more than five minutes ago, the Māori. Well, he's sticking with the front row, Colin Cooper. But you'd have to think if they can milk another one here. He's going to make changes. But look at Furlong going to work again on Haynes. This time they hold. It's a better scrum from the Māori All Blacks. And they can't budge them. Well, that's a great recovery. But they go to the short side. Fanatel. Tackle made by Ioane. They're close to the line at Toji. Sliding over try. Brilliant body position. And Murray Toji gets another try. He couldn't have gone any lower. And there's no way they could stop him. Boy, he's been impressive this evening. He told you. And that close to the line, there was two Māori players that were trying to stop him from propelling himself over the line. They couldn't do that. Well read from Connor Murray and Falatau. There's Otoji at the back. Two players try to stop him. And with momentum, he manages to, stre with strength also, get himself over the line. Well, 14 points coming in this sin binning period for Kerbalo. So it's very, very costly indeed. Not saying that he perhaps would have stopped either of the two tries because they're based around very strong set piece, strong scrummaging. But uh, not a smile yet for Warren Gatlin, but must be very, very satisfied <laughs> that uh, things are just coming together nicely. He would have witnessed the All Blacks last night. And that would have sent a shudder through the camp. But this is just bouncing back a wee bit. In completely different conditions, however. So the All Blacks, with their razzle-dazzle, were able to play in good conditions. I mean, you'd think that these conditions are very suitable to the British and Irish Lions. A nice little response, though, to what happened last night, this. It is. And this fellow here, well, he is staking a claim for that Test 15 jersey. Another successful kick from Halfpenny. A very good all-round game too. And the Lions now have a very good lead, 29 points to 10. Well, Colin Cooper having a chat with uh, Tana Rumanga and uh, his coaching staff right there about uh, what they can possibly do here. They have Kerbalo coming back in around about a minute, but the horse has bolted it seems for this combination on the park at the moment it's a better kick but it todgy going up just growing more and more in this game till haven't seen a lot from him the action really has been going on around him but he's looked rock solid murray the high kick again. Well, they're just not cleaning those up at the back. Mackenzie, it was, coming forward. Didn't take it cleanly. They've spilt more of those tonight than you would have ever expected. And that's, that's because of pressure as well. The accuracy of the kicking game. They've kicked the ball 552 metres to, opposed to 189 for the Maori. When you kick it that much, you would think that the Maori should have a lot of ball, but they just haven't been able to deal with it and haven't got it subsequently. Again, another contestable kick, and the penalty has come because one of the chasing players, in fact, uh, it may well have been George North, was impeded along those tram lines. Yeah, he, he went to ground, didn't he, yeah. Ian? And that's where the penalty came. But I'm afraid... They are compounding their own problems. Kerbalo back, but yeah, well, I don't know back. whether pushover tries from scrum, or penalty tries from scrums. He can't blame his absence for that, but boy, it, it left a hole, didn't it? And they have absolutely capitalised. I think psychologically it was a big moment, though, wasn't 
that uh, numerical advantage. Well, I think it underlined a growing yeah. sense of disarray in the Māori All Black team. And they've got this beautifully under control too, Jamie George. This is a Lions performance that is just getting better with every minute. They're doing it their way. And look at this. Māori just only managing to slow them down. Sexton now, Till pops a lovely ball back on the infield. Side to O'Brien, loose pass picked up by Lowe. He's flung to the ground by Murray. Kerbalo back in the play. Franklin trying to drive it away. Well, still a long time to go in this game. Who knows where this score could end up if the Lions can continue to build pressure like this. Unbelievable dominance of territory and possession. 70-30 on both counts. But again, they're showing some balance. The powerful drive. They got it going forward nicely. And then when they decided or had to move it, they worked it really nicely. Teo hit it short inside to O'Brien, who's been monumental this evening in that back row. So is this guy on screen. And they are very polished. And Hull they pack. are very disciplined. Hold pack to, to Justin. The, the other position, which, of course, is uh, highly contestable, is the hooking role. Jamie George making giant strides tonight. It's been very, very good and effective at line-out time. The scrum has looked solid around him. And, uh, of course, when it comes to the line-out drive, he's been instrumental as well. These are the options they have to come for, and 19 is on at the, as we speak. Ian Henderson, and uh, that is for George Cruz. Oh, it looks like uh, Jack McGrath coming on as well. Vuni Paula leaving the field. He was receiving some attention. How good has he been tonight, Marco Vuni Paula? Sure, his dad, Fial Foreman, Foreman captain against the Māori All Blacks. He'll be very proud of his son's effort tonight. Brother Billy didn't make the tour, and that's sad. The ball has not been controlled this time. One of the few times tonight they haven't. Franklin had to get himself up off the deck, and straight into the action goes McGrath, driving him to the ground. Well, can they get something going? They picked a team full of brilliant players. But they have just been shut out. And here's McKenzie, who's been bottled up all night. Got it. And, oh, look at that O'Brien he's got in there. Ripped the ball away. McKenzie gets up with a look of anguish on his face. And here come the Lions again. Till takes it to the 22. Short side they go. Into the action goes Henderson. The Irishman, the Ulsterman put on the ground inside the 22. It Todgy. Well, he's put up his hand for test selection tonight. So too's the hooker. Left the ball behind. Teal keeps it alive. O'Mahony up to Davis. The Welsh and the Irish combining beautifully in this Lions team tonight. McKenzie thought about trying to snatch it away. It wasn't on. Nice control from Henderson. In fact, that this is Henderson here. It was uh, the other replacement, McGrath. Now they surge towards the line. Got it. First nine Charlie in. Natai has got in there. And he might have saved the day. Yeah, it'll be a... Yep. Well, it's going to be a lion scrum feed. Five metres out from the line. Relentless. A uh, change for New Zealand Maori here. Chris Eves in uh, 17. And that'll be for Kane Haynes. Monster. He has been monstered all night, Damien McKenzie. And their work at the breakdown has been absolutely superb. The Lions really, apart from the fact they uh, just got beaten to the punch by Charlie Natai there, but across the park, it's just growing. I just think they probably now are at the, the stage of the game to a degree that the game has already probably left them behind the Māori where they need to change the picture a little bit. I think the introduction of Ehi West, maybe McKenzie switches the fullback. They just need to change the picture a bit because what they're working with at the moment is not working. Well, they might have 
Got a shot there of Sam Warburton warming up. He can't get out there fast enough because you just wonder whether he might sense his test jersey slipping away a little. O'Brien has done everything that could be asked of him tonight. Again, they keep it in the scrum. The longer it's in the scrum, the greater the chance of a score or a penalty. And again, advantage being played. Counter-up coming in from the Māori All Blacks, and they'll go back for the penalty. The scrum has just got more and more dominant. And they'll go again. They will go again. No doubt about it. Well, we were saying early on in the game that their scrum really hasn't been dominant on the tour. I think tonight is the night. For sure. Well, they've got to be very careful, don't they? Zilla Murray, that they don't infringe again at scrum time. Ehi West looks like uh, he's ready for that injection you called for, Justin. I just think they need to change the picture a bit. McKenzie looks frustrated. He was certainly not saying that he's having or has had a bad game. It's just that they don't know and can't figure out with the limited ball that they've got so far this evening, the Maori, which has not been much. They haven't been able to figure out how to beat this defensive pattern and I think they just need to try something a bit different. See, a player that's been watching from the sideline might bring some different vision to the, into the game. So Warburton will be on, and also Elliot Daly on for George North. Utility back. He's in 23. Warburton will uh, enter in Jersey 20. Well, he's got about 18 minutes, Sam Warburton. Although Peter O'Mahony receiving some attention. There's... George North, who still just looks a little short of peak fitness, but we know how dangerous he can be. I think to typify the game, to put it in perspective, and we've alluded to you the stats, but to reinforce it, think of these names. Nehe Milner Scudder, Charlie Natai, Rico Ioani. How many times in this game have you seen those players with their attacking qualities, with ball in hand and some space to move in? I, I, I can't think of any sticks well, stage of this match. Once Milner Scudder, what happened? A try. Yeah. Once. And we haven't hardly called his name since. He just cannot get into the game. That shows you how awesome this Lions team have been at shutting the Māori out, completely negating their game. Just find some shirt away from his arm. Just find some shirt beyond his arm. Yeah. Yep, sure. So it's another five-metre scrum. Just to confirm that Warburton will also take over leadership now of uh, the 15. Now, Anthony Watson pacing around wide on the right. And interestingly, Davis and Tiho have swapped around in the midfield. Maybe there's a back move imminent. I doubt it. The will want the ball. Well, it depends. Is it, is it going to get out of the scrum? Exactly. I think they'll put it in there and keep it in there. Well, Chris Eves holding up initially. Now the second shove comes in. And yet again, it clatters in a heap. Lions go into clear out. Look at Daly getting in there to help the forwards out. Again, they drive at the line. McGrath driven back. And uh, Marty, you've got hands on this. First man in. And uh, what are they going to do here? Well, there's nothing much on McKenzie. All he can do is thump it into the grandstand. There's Matt Proctor, and it doesn't look good. This was a good piece of defense. It was the skip that got in there. I think Dixon. No, in fact, it was Chris Eves. Probably quite fortunate too, the Māori, to get away two and three. without conceding a penalty in two that scrum. Reinforcements up front. Yep. We've got uh, Kyle Sinclair in 18. He's been prominent on this tour yes. thus far. And uh, Jamie George, job well done. Put himself forward big time tonight. Ken Owens in Jersey 16. Has uh, 16 minutes to stake a small claim himself. And the man on the right has had a massive game. Tyke Furlong. The man from Wexford 
good farming stock. Itoji. Or a metropolitan man. That's once. It's gone backwards. I've tried to get that line out drive going. Oh, Murray has been in complete control of things behind a pack that's become better and better as the games wore on. They use it. Ready to release. They give it straight to Till. Tackle made by Thompson, but they free it up. Sexton held up off the deck, and uh, they've got the ball off. And what can they do? Well, Kerr Barlow kicks. Rico Ioane giving chase, but the bounce taken by Davis, hit hard by Kerr Barlow. Well, he trying to get numbers to the breakdown, but it falls for the Lions. Loose pass. And back into the 22, it goes to Elliot Daly. And he drives it deep. Oh, the crowd, they just want to see some of the classic Māori All Black action that they've been denied tonight just by this smothering defence of the Lions. Akira Ioane. Kerr Barlow. But look at the pressure they're under. Messam leaves it behind. Natai. It does look pretty messy, doesn't it? They've still got the ball, though. Messam. It's a nice little ball away. Now Thompson. But he went over the touchline. Well, I don't know. How much of it, Justin, has it been disappointing performance from the Māori All Blacks how much of it really you've just got to put down to the dominance of the Lions dominance of the Lions they've completely shut them out of the game nine they've won all of the micro battles in the match no doubt about that and, and they've ten. frustrated the Māori in everything that they've been doing this evening clinical the high west the straight swap for McKenzie for New Zealand Māori and two changes in the back line also for the Lions Dan Bigger late to replacement for Iron Farrell he's on in 22 uh, and Greg Laidlaw at half pack in 21. Another dominant display by Murray, Justin, and the man following him off, John Sexton. Excellent. Both of them had brilliant games. Connor Murray, exceptional. And Sexton, right from the start, positive. Owens. Warburton calling himself at the line out. And they've been patient, prepared to edge initially, and then just wait for the moment. What? Almost accelerate the drive, feeding it back to Falatau. No question, he'll be playing the tests. O'Brien behind him made a big statement tonight. Teal going hard at Ihaia West, Akira Ioane, who's been one of the better players for the Māori All Blacks. Mess him going in for the tackle, rather falling off it in the end. Now spinning is Owens, and he captained them in the defeat against the Blues. Low ball pick, Davis. Again, Akira Ioane, who's tackled everything that's come at him tonight. Bigger, hits it away to Watson, dangerous broken field runner. Another tackle from Akira Ioane. But still the Lions just controlling possession. Controlling the tempo of the game. Henderson setting it. And uh, again, a penalty advantage. Here's O'Brien, loses it, but they'll have another penalty. What's that penalty count now? 13 to 4, and 10 of those have been in their own territory. <laughs> They've won the physical battle as well. And there's that compelling stat. And the rest of them, you will not be surprised at if you've been watching this game right from the start. It is a complete performance from the Lions. And tackle count, 121-57. A few boos from the crowd as uh, they feel the game is already won by the Lions, but they're going to keep going for the Jaguar. Three points, another three points. Going to be racked up by half penny. take them into the 30s. They have a pattern, and the pattern is obvious, but it's been very good tonight. 
Well, this is going to be the biggest winning margin in history, in the history of games between these two sides. Already at 19 points. You put a ring around it. In a moment, it'll be 22 to 10. Right out in front, half penny. Six out of six tonight still. Without a miss on tour. You put the house on this one. Over it goes. And now the score is starting to blow out. Lions 32, Māori All Blacks 10. And they'll be happy. Right now they're thinking the affair was worthwhile. Well, a lot of them have just arrived. For them, the tour has only begun this week. Joe Wheeler goes, Ben May goes. He's captain. is on. Also on Leighton Price. See Marcel Renata yep. out there as well in the blue headgear. And, and who chases the kickoff but Akira Ioane. No one has tried harder in a well-beaten team than him. Greg Laidlaw at halfback, who's Uncle Roy played on this ground against Bay of Plenty back in 1983. And what a great day for Scotland. Already had one significant result. And Laidlaw is going to be part of another one. Here's Marcel Renata. I've just had so little ball. West the rush defence, that was Teal getting up, Milner Scudder, well it's the first time probably since he created that try that he's had the ball, low with a little chip kick ahead and puts it out on the full. Well, I think he's made more little errors in this game than he probably has all season for the Chiefs, they're just trying hard to make things happen and they just haven't. Seven. And just look at the growing presence of red in the crowds for these games, it gets bigger every game Justin certainly does they have arrived here no doubt about that yeah. as we see a change Elliot Dixon's night is over and he's replaced by Pryor down to the back Henderson wins it Teal who's becoming prominent slicing through Ben Teal Kerbalo got back and made the tackle but there it is for Laidlaw. They've got them stretched out on the left. Quickly through the hands. Davis floats the pass over to Daly. Milner Scudder got across. Ioane in there trying to fight, at least to slow it down so they can reassemble their defence. Owens. Laidlaw. Oh, nice time to come on, isn't it? Team in such good form. Faletau. Setting it. Waiting for the run, McGrath wanted it, but they go beyond him. Here's Watson. You don't see much of him with the ball, but you know that he's a threat. Henderson, well, the man who played so brilliantly for Ireland when Paul O'Connell went down in the World Cup a couple of years ago. Here's another Irishman, O'Brien, the man from Tullow. Was a bit hard for Sinclair. Got the ball and Renata at the same time. But they're moving the ball with confidence. Not a great pass to half penny. Milner Scudder's got him. Tackle release. But their ball maintenance in conditions that are not easy has been outstanding. Warburton now. Into the last eight minutes of the game. Now oh, it's Owens. Fighting his way forward, Laidlaw in there. Bigger. Hey, oh, they've had to make so many tackles tonight. Look at the numbers available no for this the Lions. Is. Bigger. Half penny, who's been brilliant. Watson. O'Brien oh. now. With this relentless momentum. Ball's bounced away off the tackle of Hicker Elliott. Watson runs straight into Elliott. 
Just a knock on advantage. And coming through. Of the black out of prior on the field in Jersey 20. Oh, looking for clues across this park. If this is the Saturday group that uh, they're going forward to next week, uh, who's going to miss out? I mean, the front row looks absolutely superb. This locking combination has been outstanding. Maybe Warburton is going to miss because this, those forwards, oh, if go. they're all let's fit go. going into Saturday, are there oh, and then the, undoubted the centre pairing, Justin, has been fan phenomenally good. It's been excellent, hasn't it? Tio and Davis have been outstanding. They've made lots of line breaks as well. Let's not get wrapped up in the in, in the after the game's finished and, and saying that the Lions are one-dimensional because they haven't go, been one-dimensional. Their set piece has been excellent. They've been physically dominant at the let's rucks go. and the malls, but also they have made line breaks out wide on the tram let's lines. Go. The balance in their game is very good. Got to compliment them. They are piecing together a formidable lineup and also a formidable game plan. And then throw the defence in there as well. Well, it is a wonderful sight to see this big crowd here. And they're seeing this Lions team making by far their biggest statement. You could say that the win against the Crusaders was a very important step for them, but this takes it to another level. Certainly does. And I guess the other thing that we need to recognise is so much talk about the positive attitude of the reserve bench from the All Blacks last night, while also equally... The players that have come into this game for the Lions, they are showing some depth in this team that they've picked. The players making an impact when they come on, they've not missed the beat, it's been faultless. Don't want to take anything away from the Lions' performance. There's one thing I'd throw into the mix here, Justin. 2005, that Māori All Black team had had a game against Fiji. These guys didn't have that opportunity. They had a week or so together, but they didn't have a game together. That hasn't helped. Whether it would have made a difference, well, you can only speculate. The, ball. Oh, the scrum certainly been very good tonight. Bigger moves it on Teal. Really relishing the opportunity late in the game to show what a threat he can be. Half penny. Work it out towards the wing. Daly. Trying to keep the ball alive. And Carter Pryor getting in there. Who, uh, like his grandfather, Albie in 1959, gets a chance to play twice against the touring team. Quickly through the hands. Owens hangs on. No, lost it. That's the territory in the second half. Yep, on his drum. On his drum, yeah. Pulled it over. I can imagine, Smithy, it'd be north of 75%. Here it comes. 87, there you go. I would, I would suggest that the position is, is very close to that as well. They've had, there you go. <laughs> and I, I, I profess I did not know that was coming up, but any, anybody out there watching the game can tell that the, the Māori just have not had the ball. Boy, I tell you what, though, who's not excited about next Saturday night in Auckland? All you lucky people that have tickets, and then all you even luckier people that get to tune in to Sky Sports live and exclusive for that first test. We have got a contest next Saturday night, Eden Park. Can't yeah. wait. Disappointment for the Māori All Blacks, but what does this do to ramp up interest in that oh. Test match series now? A couple of weeks ago, well, people were very quick to write this team off. Far too quick. They didn't have a great preparation for the tour. More time spent looking after the sponsors than their own preparation, I think. But now they've been here a couple of weeks. No more tackle. They've established how they're going to do it, who they're going to do it with. Stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Leave it. Just stop. Just, just step away. Just step away. Step away. Come on. Well, players gathering around. More talk than action. Get away or get penalised. I will look. I will look. I think it's O'Brien. He's not happy. He feels yeah. that something has happened to him on the ground. And he is, I tell you, he is a very angry man right now. 
you want the mark? Yeah. Do it. We're, we're gonna look. We're gonna look. There's something happen. Smitty. Go ahead. I'm concerned about this uh, push and shove. On, or there was a bit of a wrestle on the ground when the ball left. And uh, just just clear that there's no elbows and no. Uh, we need to separate those players, mate. Yeah. Go now or get penalised. Please take them back, Sam. Will you take them back, please? Well. Okay, Smithy. We got, Let's see got what it was all about, if we can establish what it was all okay, about. Okay, checking for potential foul play in the uh, push and shove on the ground. dragged on so yeah. long that you would think the Lions have got a real case here. Well, there's O'Brien. Goes to ground. It's that breakdown we just left there. Well, you see a hand or two on the face. I think initially low. Vicar Elliott's in there as well. This should show us. James Lowe gets up as he gets back re-involved, but... I think he gets an elbow, an accidental elbow, it looked like, from the Māori player in the headgear. Yes, Smithy, it's, it's, it's after the ball moves away that something happens. Understood. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do not have a camera angle after okay. the pass, so that's all the footage. I have nothing to add. All right, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to warn both captains and, and then restart with a scrum to black. Yeah, nothing really he could do on no. the evidence available both to captains, him. Both captains, please. Just natural that the ball is followed by the cameras rather than there's nothing clear on the really footage look like much and, and there's no other angles oh, fair enough. all right so we're going to restart with a scrum to black because they were in possession be very careful because 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 i'll escalate soon now okay Over here. so you might have picked it up at home what, what O'Brien was complaining about was he felt that he'd been elbowed in the face. I don't think we saw anything that was of intent. If he got an elbow in the face, which he may very well have done, it would have been accidental as he was getting rolled out of the out of the breakdown. No damage done. And, uh, well, the boys all sorted it out between themselves with a bit of banter. The damage is up there top the left is on the Five. scoreboard 32 10 biggest ever Six. winning margin for the lions over the maori all blacks previously it was 11. rob thompson The other good thing uh, from the Lions' point of view here is something the All Blacks have done incredibly well for the last umpteen years. Impact off the bench. There's a lot of players have come off the bench from the Lions' point of view, and we stressed that last night, didn't we, with the All Blacks get stronger and stronger when the bench comes on. The Lions are going to have to match them to compete with them. They've looked good off the bench too. It is threatening, I must admit. It is threatening to boil over a bit here. There's a lot of frustration. From the Māori, obviously, have been completely shut out of this game. And uh, I think the sooner that we hear that final whistle, the better, because the game is starting to disintegrate a little bit. Well, there's uh, Graham Roundtree. Fantastic set of ears that man has. Bring the ball. Well, again, it's that, that second shove that goes in from the Lions at scrum time. Teal. Thompson in there trying to make the tackle. He's very strong, Ben Teo. The man who was cut loose by the Warriors when he was in his teens. He's gone on to become a rising star of international rugby. I have no idea if it was not. Neil Jenkins. Now he could kick a football. No, I was out of the way. A rugby ball, I should say. I was say he's got his side of things sorted, did not he? With Lee Haft, didn't he? <laughs> There you go. It was actually 16 no, no, points. You are fine, yes. 
you got to stay up. You've got to stay up, OK? Let's go. Here is Lee Halfpenny. Interesting, he's not going to get offered another contract at too long because of his international commitments. How dare international rugby get in the way of club football in France? Crouch! Boy! Set! So Laidlaw to put it in. Just seconds to go here in Rotorua. And it's another scrum penalty. A legal wheel. Well, it's a match that started with a hiss. The challenge laid down by the Māori All Blacks, but it has been a roar, a huge roar from the British and Irish Lions. A massive statement they've made here in Rotorua. 32 to 10. What a result. One week out from the first test. They have dominated this game pretty much from start to finish. Two tries to one. Excellent goal kicking. All round accuracy in difficult conditions. Justin Marshall, a very impressive statement they have made. And a statement they have made, big time. They, they are here to win the Test Series. There's no doubt about that. They've been, when they've got close to their Test team, and this must very well be that. They've been emphatic in the two victories, the Crusaders and the shutout here too of the New Zealand Māori. Comprehensive performances. And we will have a competitive match next weekend. There is absolutely no doubt about that. He will be a happy man, Warren Gatlin. Farrell behind him. They know what they are doing for all the bad press that they've been getting about the quality of this side well i think we witnessed it this evening they have got some quality and depth and they will be a formidable opposition for the all blacks well this was the game we expected to see them showing their test hand they probably had to do it a week earlier than planned because of the early pressure from those unconvincing performances first up and so they showed us in christchurch last week their intention and they've built on that here tonight just really didn't give the Māori All Blacks a chance to get into the game and when they did get a bit of ball well they just made mistakes group of traveling English fans there and they have work their way down from the top of the terrace down to the bottom to salute their team well ash dixon standing by now with ian smith well ash so much uh, history involved in this game and so much uh, preparation so many high hopes you just simply couldn't really get into it yeah, the second half we started poorly. Um, we gave away some simple penalties and we were just stuck down in our own half for pretty much most of that match. So we didn't have a lot of momentum that second half and we paid the price there. Their game plan, I think we, everyone knew their game plan, but they executed it very well. They, they chased the kicks well. They caused you some grief under the high ball. Yeah, I thought the first half we were pretty good. You know, our, our defence held up and we took the high ball here and there, but the, the second half our discipline really was pretty poor. Um, we kept them in our half, I guess, for most of that game. And, you know, when they kick it high, we've got to take those bombs and defuse them. And we weren't quite good enough today. But um, really proud of the boys, uh, the way we prepared this week. Um, I don't think we could have prepared any better. Set pieces because uh, they're going to be critical in the next three weeks. Their performance at scrum time uh, seemed to get stronger. Yeah, it seemed like that. Um, you know, the second half, their scrum seemed to operate a lot better. Um, you know, they, they got some pretty good quality ball, but we are just stuck in in our half, and I guess the Simbini didn't help us. Um, I think the boys' heads went a bit down there, and we, and we tried to keep it calm and, and whatnot, but um, yeah, full credit to the Lions. They fully deserve their win today. Yeah, so much pressure that uh, you had, uh, as uh, Colin Cooper said before the game, Ferraris to let loose, but they just didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, we didn't give them good enough ball to be able to create that, and I think the weather didn't really help with a bit of a dewy ball, so it's probably one of those games where you don't really want the ball, you just got to play down on that half, and we, our kicking game wasn't quite on point tonight, but um, you know, that's rugby, and uh, hopefully the Lions um, have got another game next week against the ABs, it's going to be a good match. Thanks very much, Ash. Tough luck tonight, eh? Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah, a frustrating night. 
says it all that everyone was hoping for big things from that back line but they just never got the chance it was about building pressure taking the opportunities and how well they did it Itoji got a try so I think that's uh, six tries on two are all scored in different ways Itoji or by different people Itoji a penalty try seven out of seven from half penny let's head back down to the sideline well captain I think you must be delighted about the, the dominance you showed there um, yeah, look, very proud of the lads today. It's, it's a difficult, difficult, difficult game against the Maoris wherever we play. Obviously, look, we've, we've played in club side or Munster and, 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 and obviously with the Lions now, and it's, it's difficult every time, obviously at home as well. Uh, I'm hugely proud of the lads, the way we, we dug in tonight, obviously in difficult conditions um, against the quality outfit. I thought the boys were very good. Your game plan was executed uh, pretty perfectly, really. I mean, you, you chased the high ball well. Uh, but your set pieces, you must be thrilled with that. Yeah, look, you base every game is based off of, of good set piece, and 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 it goes a long way to winning a game. And and I thought the boys were very good tonight. Um, you know, the lads do a huge amount of work in second rows in our line out, line out defence, line out attack, and and obviously the the front row our boys drive our, our scrum, and thought they were very impressive tonight. Defence too, you'd be pretty happy with that. You didn't give them a lot of ball, but what they got, they couldn't do anything with. Yeah, look, it's, it's hugely important, you know, any, any successful teams, be it club, country or, or obviously the Northern Lions, you've got to be based on a, on a serious defence and, and we feel like we're building nicely. How important tonight, you think, uh, I know it's, it's, it's a bit early to really analyse deeply, but how important you think this result? Yeah, look, it's important for our momentum, our confidence, um, you know, you, you don't want to be going into games playing against the All Blacks. Um, would have would have losses on your belt so look this win goes a, a long way to build building on what we want to build and and obviously bigger challenges not bigger challenges but obviously a big challenge coming on tuesday and, and then obviously into the the various serious stuff then on saturday speaking of challenges and speaking of presentations you've got one to go to now congratulations on a great performance thank you very much thank you <laughs> Yes, a, a warrior of New Zealand to a, a warrior from Munster. The first Munster man to captain the Lions in New Zealand, and he gets an impressive win, Peter O'Mahony. 32-10, to 10, the final score, the British and Irish Lions over the Māori All Blacks.